Dim bulb tester and isolation transformer. This is the documentation of the experience of a hobby project, available in video and in written form, made with the hope that it could be helpful to others. But any comment that could help me to improve my practice is also welcome and appreciated. Most old radios do not have any sort of safety measure, including against short circuits. Even a basic fuse is often missing. While restoring an old radio, just trying it connecting the radio to the mains is generally a bad idea because the components deteriorate and even wire insulation is usually lost. The basic step to prevent extensive damage in case of a short circuit is to put a fuse between the source of power and the device. The fuse is like a small light bulb made to light up and burn immediately once the current flowing into it reaches a certain point. To test a device with some degree of control over the maximum current that could flow through it, together with a fuse, an old light bulb with tungsten filament could be placed in the circuit. When the filament of the light bulb is cold, the resistance is relatively low. When a current flows through the filament, it warms up progressively and its resistance also increases. Depending on the current, there is a voltage differential across the light bulb, which is subtracted from the voltage differential across the device that is protected in this way. If the device were completely short-circuited, the maximum current that would flow through this type of circuit would depend on the light bulb specification. For example, with the electrical mains providing in Europe 230 volts, if the light bulb were made to dissipate 40 watts, the maximum current would be approximately 0.17 amps, and all the voltage differential would appear across the light bulb. With a more powerful light bulb, the maximum current would be higher, and vice versa for less powerful light bulbs. When an old radio is tested with a dim bulb tester, it would be appropriate to start with a low power light bulb, progressively increasing the power of the light bulb if, in the meantime, no short circuit and no abnormal current draw is detected. Having to operate inside devices that require a possible lethal voltage for human beings it would be appropriate to insert an isolation transformer between the mains and the device. The isolation transformer has no electrical connection between primary and secondary winding and the output current could flow only between the two output terminals of the secondary winding. Theoretically, if there were a connection with the ground and one of the secondary winding terminals no current would flow there, but that would make the output of the transformer less safe. The isolation transformer is particularly useful when operating with old radios because often their chassis is directly connected to the mains. However, it is important to clarify that an isolation transformer does not guarantee against electrocutions and sometimes it could even be counterproductive. In fact, if the two output terminals are touched simultaneously, for example because one of them is grounded and the operator is touching the other terminal, then a current would flow through the body of the person, and that could be lethal, depending on the voltage and therefore the amount of the current that would flow. In such circumstances, it is important to consider also that any other external security measure, like a residual current circuit breaker, would be completely useless because the isolation transformer would prevent them from being activated. For this project, a transformer with an extra 400 volts input is used, which would drop the output to about half the voltage 
if that input is fed instead with the regular 230 volts from the mains. The plan is to start with a couple of light bulbs in series to get a very high initial restriction with the possibility to add up to four other light bulbs in parallel and even to short all the light bulbs to get a full power at the output. Considering that this unit will be used with unpolarized power plugs, two couples of fuses are used, one for protecting the input and one for the output. The plan is to use fuses that are rated F0.1 amps, which however would blow only at about 800 milliamps. The switches that will be used also have the possibility to glow, powering the internal light with about 230 volts. However, they will glow all simultaneously, even if connected as the schematic diagram suggests. For this project, a wooden box is used that formerly contained the same isolation transformer, but with an arrangement that was not very satisfactory. The signs of screws inside the box are still visible. First of all, an adaptation is made to make sure that the box can be kept closed. A single screw will be sufficient for the purpose. The transformer is installed inside the box in a suitable position, leaving enough space for the other components. The meter needs a rectangular hole on the lid of the box. It is obtained by drilling close to the edges and opening the hole, then by rasping and filing the wood until the instrument can fit correctly. For the switches, latching push button types are used, which are long enough for being installed on the wood in the box. The light bulbs are small halogen types that are still fairly available from online sellers. They need only a small socket. For safety concerns, it seems a good idea to connect the metal body of all the switches to ground using a thin metal plate to be installed behind the box lid. The wooden box has two holes, one on the left and the other on the right side, with the function of handles. It is now too dangerous to leave them open, so they are used for hiding the fuse holders. Also the last switch, responsible for shorting all the light bulbs and giving unrestricted power, is installed on the right side of the box and its body is grounded like the others. To arrange all the wires properly, a couple of boards are used. They are installed using four screws each, partly inserted in the wood, with the function of standoffs. On the head of the screws, a piece of copper wire is soldered to insert and hold the boards. Outside on the lid, also a set of output power sockets is installed, and the project is finished. Here is how this box works without a load. The input voltage is about 230 volts. Initially all the switches are in the off position and the input voltage selector is set to 400 volts therefore the output voltage should start from about 130 140 volts when the unit is powered on. Power on. The input voltage selector is switched to 230 volts and consequently the output voltage rises to about the same value. There are already in the circuit 220 watts current limiting light bulbs in series. Another 20 watts light bulb is added in parallel to reduce the current restriction. Added 25 watts added 40 watts, added 60 watts, 
All the restrictions are bypassed, turning on the switch hiding on the side of the box. It is clearly visible that the output voltage provided by the isolation transformer is higher than it should be. It reaches 250 volts instead of 230. Under the circumstances, very likely it will never be necessary to use the bypass switch on the side. The following is a test with a tube radio powered from the output of the unit. It develops like in the previous test except that the bypass switch will not be used and the selection of light bulbs is done to get a final output of about 230 volts. Ah, tutti i vestiti vengono fuori dai lavoroni altro Dipende che dipendeva se le... la mamma era brava oppure no sì, sì, <ride> immagino magari andavi in giro con delle toppe al posto del giù devo dirti dito. che per quanto riguarda Zotto invece credo che sia un po' passata la moda vero? Ma bisogna <ride> prendere delle istruzioni perché questa è la, la, la verità e quindi eh, quindi che If you would like to contribute to this project, donating old electronics, old equipment, or old radios in whatever condition they might be, that could be helpful for my next restoration documentation.